Hello guys, welcome back. How's your day today? I hope you are doing fine or very fine. <laughs> so I did receive a request from a viewer of the channel uh, who asked me to create a video describing how to beat um, lesser AI levels like uh, semi-pro and professional. He has some trouble and you know people can sometimes um, not think about others who have trouble with lesser levels and think that you know, I should just create a video on how to beat uh, World Class or how to beat uh, Legendary or Ultimate. But uh, what about the, you know, the least difficult levels that can present a challenge to some people? Uh, why not address those as well? And uh, the idea here is to actually help people. I mean, with the videos I'm, I'm aiming to help uh, as many people as I can. And uh, obviously my level is not uh, the best, uh, it's not the worst either, but uh, I would say that I'm somewhere in the middle uh, in terms of uh, skill, uh, maybe a little bit more than average, but uh, the thing here and the objective is to actually help others. So uh, receiving this request was actually rather interesting for me, because um, the, the guy that uh, sent this over is a viewer, and um, you see actually they had a, they had a, they hit the bar here. So um, you know I could I could be one down right now. Uh, but as you see here, I'm, keep, I'm keep, keeping my cool and I'm passing my way to my first goal here. And uh, notice that all these passes in the very end were actually uh, through balls. Because I wanted the ball to move forward. And if I used the normal pass, uh, this would actually... So this, is, this is a through ball. This is also a through ball here. So if I use the normal pass, the ball would kind of go um, sideways or maybe even behind. And I would lose uh, important time there and maybe actually miss the, miss the chance as well. So, yeah, as I was saying, um, and I elected to play with, um, with a very good, against a very, very good opponent here and in, in the professional level. Uh, this is the professional AI. And um, I did play another game earlier, but the, the, the opponent was, uh, you know, the opponent's team was actually really, really easy. Uh, and um, I won comfortably. And then I decided, okay, let's not let's let's not actually showcase this game, but instead play against a better opponent and uh, in squad battles and uh, actually show this one. So, as you see here, uh, the way I'm attacking is um, I'm trying to build up play by passing a lot. Like uh, I'm I'm not taking my chances. It's far more important to wait a little bit and lose time than actually try to take a pass that's not going to connect. Like as you see here, I was very patient exchanging passes and trying to find space and when you are actually exchanging passes right outside the box of your opponent as you see that I did here multiple times the defenders tend to drag themselves uh, forward and this gives you more sp this gives more space for your wingers for example to join the attack or for the for players who are actually moving on the side to join the attack and remember that you want to be using your L1 button or uh, that would be a bit of the LT button on an Xbox to instruct uh, your players to make a forward run uh, so that you have um, you have more chances and more players uh, moving up the box of your opponent uh, and um, it's important to also have and I have explained this in a previous tutorial about the custom tactics I would uh, certainly recommend um, that you are uh, using a high speed value like um, 80 or something because uh, this instructs how, f how fast your players will run towards the attack and yeah, this may expose you sometimes to offside traps or offsides, uh, but um, overall it's a good idea because uh, you actually need players in the attack fast. Uh, like here, for example, you see them run. But I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to take the pass, but I actually don't do it. I actually make the mistake by waiting also later, but that's not the point. The, th the thing is that I, I didn't take the pass because I saw that I didn't have a chance uh, to, to actually connect with, uh, my, for my player to, to connect with the ball. So taking a through ball there would, would be a mistake because I would just lose the ball. It's always better to, you know, to find a pass behind than actually lose the ball and give it to your opponent. Because then you are defending. But if you are just, if you just miss a, pa ma miss a pass and pass behind, you are still on, you're, you know, you are still holding the ball. So no harm done there. So I'm scoring another one, as you see, quite comfortably um, winning. But, um, and as you notice, this is nothing about, uh, you know, dribbles and stuff. Like here, I'm just getting my player and I'm noticing that the opponent's uh, defender is not so good at marking. Or that he doesn't actually uh, commit uh, himself with marking me very close. And so I have a space to actually move in and take the shot and score my third goal. And it's always important to notice what your opponent's defenders are doing. Because um, they do 
change the way they play. Sometimes they actually mark you closely, other times they, they make sort of like a zone mark. Uh, so always, always make sure that you take a look at what they are doing. Uh, like here, they, for example, I, I shot, but he took a fantastic tackle. Uh, obviously, my my opponent, the opponent AI here, is uh, has a very very strong players, and even though the the difficulty is uh, professional, it shouldn't be that high. They are still very very good players with very very high statistics, so attributes. So it's um, they are still you know pretty good at uh, challenging me and uh, you know taking taking shots and um, you know blocking my shots and stuff. Regardless of that, just by simple passing, you see how easy it is to score. And so you always want to be including all your uh, or most of your midfielders and attackers in the in the battle for uh, for you know for for a goal. And sometimes your wingers as well, Prefer preferably one of your wingers on each attack. Uh, you want them to overlap. You don't want your whole defensive line to overlap. Uh, you see here that uh, I've noticed that their defender, and that's something that you should take, uh, you should also do in your games. I've noticed that the defender on the um, right side of of my attack. In the the central the central defender the central defender and the end on the right side of my tag is actually rather rather slow so I'm trying to exploit um, his uh, his being slow uh, by you know uh, passing towards him most of the time so I'm using my st the strength of my players also in this situation uh, I'm trying to make a pass which is debatable I could have lost that but uh, it was like the last pass before the goal so um, even if even if you lose the ball it's okay I mean it's an attempt. And uh, comfortably, we you are know, winning 5-0 um, at the moment. Uh, we are still in the first half, but um, def defense is obviously also super important. And uh, uh, as I've said in a previous uh, in a previous uh, video, uh, you can use the legacy defending in squad battles, especially uh, not online, but in squad battles you can. And uh, you probably should if you are aiming to get some points. Because uh, it uh, really helps tremendously, and um, you know you will have much. Um, it will be much much easier for you to defend than actually using tactical defending, which is a little bit messy and it doesn't doesn't actually work sometimes. And you may have trouble like um, being like, why why can't I use my defender the way I want them to? So yeah, uh, legacy defending is a little bit a little bit of an automated type of defending, but uh, you know for playing squad battles it's. Uh, Probably recommend it if you are really going for the points, and I could see that a lot of you would actually want to gain the points because um, squad battles points mean mean coins, and you know it's um, it's it's very very useful. And uh, remember that placing shots uh, from outside the box can also be uh, pretty good, and uh, you you have to know your players. Um, it's uh, it's the long shots whenever you are outside the box, like as I am here. It's the long shots attribute that matters. So you, you need to know what your player's attributes are. It's not the finishing values, the finishing is always inside the box. So finishing, finishing comes into play where you are inside the box, long shots when you are outside the box, remember that and always plan for that. I mean have your players, your, your players who shoot from outside the box have uh, good long shots instead of uh, finishing. You also want them to have good finishing but if you want to use them for long shots, make sure that their long shot stats uh, are pretty pretty good here. And you notice here, I'm not just trying to go deep into my opponent's defense with my, one of my players. I'm trying to pass my way through that. And I eventually take the shot. Yeah, I, I, the opponent's goalkeeper saves that, but uh, it was a nice opportunity. And that's what you want to do with your games. Um, always decide when you want to play with a target man or, or with uh, um, you know a lot of passes instead. Uh, I go for the passes and more of an agile type of game. Uh, I like um, I like speedy players and uh, not so much playing with target men and uh, crosses. I found that crosses are not as efficient as actually playing with passes, and I actually enjoy playing with passes more. Uh, I like to build up my play and trying to find space in my opponent's uh, defense, and it's uh, obviously it's not always that easy. But for the most part, in uh, in professional games, you shouldn't have uh, in semi-pro games, you shouldn't have much trouble and that's what the video is about here you see I want to and I am actually gonna be showing and I'm showing all the whole game here because uh, I want you to see uh, how I am attacking and how I am defending how I'm switching my players as you see here I always switch players and I'm trying to defend in, de in depth uh, I'm trying to use a player to, to pretty much uh, defend the space that uh, my opponent can exploit and not actually charge onto them that's super important you want to be aggressive you want to charge towards your opponent but you want to do that while your opponent is not in a dangerous position 
like with when they are sideways uh, for example like here uh, you want to be a little bit more aggressive when they are near the um, you know the throw in lines um, when they're on the side of the pitch but when they are actually attacking towards the center of the pitch, pick, uh, pitch when they're trying to enter your box you kind of want to uh, to defend in depth you want to be controlling a player that's uh, defending your space really and um, not uh, not directly marking your your opponent you always need to be defending the pass first and then the shot always remember that if you are not if you don't have the uh, the players obviously to defend both uh, always defend the pass first and then the player who has the shot, the ball um, that's a rule of thumb because um, it's it's uh, the first thing that uh, your opponent will see and especially when you're playing with humans the first th thing that they are seeing when they're attacking with uh, let's say in a, on a 2v1 situation they always see the pass first first they don't see that i'm gonna be running with my player and just score directly they always see the pass remember that if on uh, two versus one situations so if you're right if you're right in the middle um, and you are you are covering the pass you're you're probably fine but if you're in the middle and you're not covering the pass that's a problem so that's that's a side um, side thing it doesn't it doesn't apply so much with uh, squad battles because uh, uh, you know, when you're playing with uh, humans, um, they tend to be better at uh, locating these types of pat patterns and uh, they exploit them better. But anyway, going back to our game, we're comfortably comfortably winning here. And um, uh, as you see here again, I'm not I'm not just uh, getting my player and try to run towards the the pitch, uh, the box. I, I make a mistake on the pass, but that's not the, on the pass, but that's not the point. The point is that I didn't actually uh, take my player and uh, just run towards my the opponent's box because I could just lose the ball. Um, I just passed it back and yeah, I made a mistake. I just passed it, uh, you know, in the, the wrong way and I, I lost the ball. But that's fine. I mean, that happens. The, the point is that uh, I did what I, I had to do, the proper thing. And in these type of situation, types of situations, you, you either want to pass back or you want to dribble and try to, to find a way towards the opponent's bo box. But you don't want to like wait or... Um, Weight can be okay sometimes, but you don't want to, you know, to to power up and just just press sprint and just running to start running towards your opponent's box, because when you are holding the ball, um, you are slower. When you are actually controlling the ball, you are slower, slower, and your defender is going to be um, faster than normal. So um, you're, it's very very likely that you're gonna lose the ball if you just uh, you know thrust ahead, the, um, you know your your opponents. So. Defending as you see here. Yeah, it's I'm trying to cut uh, the spaces instead. Uh, it's not so much about marking the uh, individual players. I, I'm not marking perfectly here. Yes, I'm actually considering a goal. Uh, I tried and that's that's the thing with uh, with FIFA um, with changing players in FIFA switching players. Um, I do have some trouble with it even even when I'm using the, the right stick, which is uh, more of like a manual way of switching players. I tried it. I tried doing it earlier actually in the goal I considered. But it just didn't work. It, it never gave me the player that I was aiming for, and uh, it was frustrating. But okay, I mean we are seven one ahead, so not not a whole, a whole big deal here. But uh, yeah, it was it was frustrating to concede that because I thought that I could, uh, you know, I could actually intercept that uh, earlier. Uh, just this this kind of lag and this kind of not lag really the difficulty in player switching, the the weirdness in player switching can cost you like a goal in some situations especially when you're playing against the uh, higher AIs, higher difficulty like uh, legendary for example so hopefully that gives you the some some ideas though on how how you should be approaching uh, the, the game both in uh, defense and offense and also in your custom tactics um, i would recommend that if you're playing against the um, semi-pro or professional i would recommend more of an attacking type of um, formation um, I would, and I'm I'm going for like a two, th uh, four, two, three, one here, and um, sorry, no, I'm I'm actually using a, f uh, I believe I'm using a four, um, four, three, two. No, I'm using a four, three, two, one here. I'm I think I'm mistaken. No, I, I don't. Um, I'm I'm forgetting the formation that I'm using. Oh my, uh, I believe I'm playing with two attackers, so that would be like a four, three, one, two, right? Yes. So yeah, that's that's the one I'm using. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I actually completely forgot. I thought I was playing for two, three, one, which I am at times, but uh, I prefer to be playing with uh, more players in the offense and I, I would uh, in the attack. And I would uh, I recommend that you do the same, like pick a, pick a system that actually uses two strikers 
when you are um, when you are trying to develop your play. Because in the semi-pro and professional levels, uh, the AI is just not that good to you know to, with attacking. So I don't think you will have much, so much trouble defending. But uh, most of your troubles will probably be coming from the off the, from the from your attack. So just try to few to use a few more men when you are practicing. Uh, just go for two strikers instead of one. Uh, or if you if you prefer wingers, yeah, you can probably use like a four-two-three-one with like a couple of wingers. But um, yeah, I would go for two strikers probably uh, when you are, when I would be pra practicing against uh, this kind of difficulty. When I, when you are playing against legendary, you may as well go for two defensive midfielders instead because uh, the AI is super good with uh, their ta attacks. So it always matters who you are playing against, right? You should uh, always tell your game so that it matches who you are playing against. So yeah, I'm, I'm not very using a defensive midfielder in this one. So yeah, in um, that's that's pretty much uh, well, you know what I wanted to show you, and hopefully the seeing the whole game gives you a lot of insight. And um, I would really love it if I get questions about um, about you know about the game and about how you should go about uh, playing against uh, these kinds of AI AIs. <laughs> so how you would uh, actually um, you know try to beat this kind of uh, difficulty? Uh, let me know if that helped. Let me know if you have any questions. You will see here that uh, my previous game also, and uh, I haven't played a lot of squad battles uh, this um, this week actually. But you will see that my previous game was also like a nine one, and I, that's why I didn't want to show it. But then I played a better team, so I'm like okay. So yeah, that was it. Thank you, and I'm waiting for your questions, guys. Thank you for watching, guys. Please remember to like the video and subscribe. This will help me with creating more and more videos and tutorials about uh, FIFA 18. Make sure that you have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye!